I focused mostly on digital technology and and art, and it I had more of a maybe commercial perspective. Do I have to tell you the whole story? I can. Huh? It's just I don't know if you have. Um, I think I think many of them. I'm not sure they would call it patronage. They would call it you know a commission, a way to make money, a way to pay your rent. Uh, and I, I cannot speak on behalf of all the artists, but I know many of them do it, you know, because it it enables them to to make a living. Uh, and they tell me, usually it's not the idea is not to come up with something new for the advertiser or for you know the commissioner, or, you know. Uh, the idea is more to adapt something already existing. So there's no usually there's no innovation or peculiar creativity is more adapting something they did in a more often more design or, cu or cultural or art context and adapting it making it a bit more mainstream okay um well the way the way i see it happen very often is either you know the marketers is simply steal the idea i've seen a lot of that and it can come from you know coding or just graffiti and they use it for you know, to launch a new project or, you know, more um, for the advertisement. Um, job in itself. I remember when I was, um, at the beginning of my blog, I was approached by Nokia and, and also by other companies who are thinking, well, we have to look at the future of the technologies and very often the artists come up with ideas that get adapted several years after. So they came and they... they they saw, saw me as kind of the middleman between between the artist and 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 the people creating and manufacturing and selling these technologies and and you know they thought I would I would filter that and yeah there's sometimes there's a bit of blurring between uh, what is interaction design and what is interactive art and I found it very interesting when you know I would go to a to a school and see the end of the year show and. You know, the label uh, above the show clearly says design. And then I see them at Ars Electronica or, or, or Transmedia in purely artistic context. So I saw a lot of, a lot of that. I see a lot of that now when, when people don't feel that they have to remain attached to their own label. Um, yeah, between why is new media art always in a ghetto? Why is there no new media artists into art fair at Arco at Freeze? Why are they not more represented by galleries? Why are they not selling their work? And good strategy. To me, it's a, it doesn't matter if it's technology or not, if, as long as it's, as it's good art. What is does, um, but I'm more interested in what is critical and what is activist and what really engage with social problems and not how to make the latest apps to have your pizza faster. I really, I don't care. Okay. So the uh, defined it. I think it, hacking is, has become such a fashionable word. It used to be something a bit dark and obscure and people were frightened of them. And now it seems like anyone gets a little thrill of subver subversion when they say, oh, I've just hacked this and this. And I get, you know, I get people writing me and say, oh, you know, I want to hack a bit the model of the conference. And it's just, you know, they just say modify, modernize. And I think the, the meaning of hacking has been diluted. I don't know if it's a good or bad thing, the fact that it's it's been adapted by anyone, anywhere. I'm sure my, my, my mother is hacking the garden as we are speaking, just because she... Because it's it's a it's a word that that become fas fashionable. So on the one hand, it's good because you recognize hackers and and you um, you recognize their value. On the other hand, there's a lot of misunderstanding. It has be has become a banal word, and people don't uh, don't engage with what is hacking anymore. So that's also the negative side. But doesn't it mean the rest of society? I mean, it's very difficult for me to criticize because I can understand that people would just want to see you know, amazing images, amazing new technologies. I completely respect that. I found it extremely boring. I need, I need something. I need something more. I need to understand. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm still an old dreamer. I, 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 I'm more interested in how to change the world or to improve things than, than in how to make things more beautiful, even, even if I appreciate that. So you think so, yeah, no, because they can, they can make me very, very happy, but I will not feel the urge to write about them and talk about them. I would, I would say, go and see that. That's very beautiful, and I will not be able to, to discuss about it uh, much more. So it's just, I think it's just personal way of reacting. I love, you know, I've seen so many. 
purely and only aesthetical work and and they made me they made me happy uh, like, oh, it's, it's going to sound ridiculous it's like we are living in the dream where things are moving fast and you know when when you look back and think wow twitter is, it has completely changed our life and it, it wasn't there like I don't know, two or three years ago. I don't know when I started using it. It's quite quite a few years. But now it's completely mainstream. And now you see television or any newspaper and everybody everybody's using Twitter. Now in, I don't notice, but unless you speak to someone like Bruce Sterling, it's very difficult to take your mind out of what you're living and where everything is already so fast and there's always a new app and, you, and, a, new, and a new innovation and something you want to try because you've just read about it. So also the information like circulates so fast that, yeah, it's, um, it's really difficult to project yourself in the future because you feel almost like you're already living in some kind of future, even if you fantasize of um, having a more powerful laptop. Uh, is, is there an experience? That's, uh, that's, oh, yeah, th there are many things. Um, yeah, there are, <laughs> there are many things. Okay, uh, there's some I shouldn't talk about. But yeah, tra teletransportation, it's uh, because, you know, there was a time when they say, well, with video conferences, you, you won't need to meet, and but they don't work so well. Uh, you still need to to be with the people to really discuss and work on project. You can do part of it by... by by um, by video conferences, but the, it has its limit. So it means I have to travel. I'm sick of traveling. I lose so I waste so much time in planes and in airport and waiting for trains, and I cannot work. So I wish teletransportation. Is it is it possible? Is it going to be possible one day? I really I really want that. You mean train? I don't know. It, the problem I have with virtual reality and with, with Second Life or anything like that is the aesthetics repels me so um, it, you always feel this layer of artificial artificiality which I, I'm, 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 I never managed to truly engage and, and feel comfortable there so um, yeah virtual virtual version would, would, would be good but the ones I've tested so far have not I don't think they can replace physicality doesn't mean that physicality cannot be replaced but wh what I've Experience so far, so, so far I wasn't very impressed. I mean, James. Bad, it looks. It sounds very bad for privacy. It sounds scary. It, of course, the government will have that, and the army will have that before we 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 even hear about that. So, yeah, it sounds. Um, you know, when when I think about the future, I I usually I dis, I don't focus on on technology at all. So I will think about. Global warming, economical problems, people being sick of not, of not being allowed to cross borders. And I never see technology really, really engaging with that in, in. So it's going, it's, it's going to be used by a certain elite. Usually they live in the city. They have money. They always like to have the latest gadget. They live fast, they are anyway, and and the reality is dif different. There are so many people who don't have an iPhone. There are so many people who live outside of the city. There are so many people who really don't care about downloading applications. I know. I think about my mother, or you know, people. I, I the way the when I think about the future, that's more what I think about, and and I'm very worried about the the pressure and the influence of corporation and finance on democracy. So that's more. What I look at, and I don't look so much, oh, there's going to be fantastic pixel in the future, or you will be able to do this and that, because I always think, but yeah, but most of the people have very mundane, man, mundane problems, and, and the technology I hear about, uh, the cool technology, is not really addressing that, that so. So. Um, yes, the problem there is, is that it's still artists, so usually when artists do something that, really engage with big problem and try to make people aware of it. Very often this work I show in festivals or in galleries that most people don't go to this festival or these galleries and the people who go, they are already, you know, prepared and, and they are, they are already very receptive. They either know or they will be interested, but they are, and, and sometimes I wish more designers would engage with that or architect because people will listen to designer and architects where Whereas when they see an art project, they say, oh, this is nice, interesting, but it's just art. So I think, I hope, I wish, 
access to information online, access to information point, but especially information online, which is so big, so free, and, and to which everybody could contribute. I think it should be a basic human right, but I'm also worried about what I read about the internet and the direction it's taking. Yeah, the guy we just... Um, the world is more borderless thanks to the internet. I mean, I travel so much thanks to the internet. I get in touch with so many people from other countries thanks to the internet. But on the other hand, if you just, you know, you just like that in your corner, the, inter the internet might, ne might, might not change that. It's really easy to get lost in your own ideas, in your own forums and own ways of thinking and even going more extreme <clears throat> in that direction. So it's like everything, you know, there, yin and yang, good and bad. Um, and I feel so many people who, who I think are left out while just looking, oh, you have an iPad, oh, you have an iPhone. So you can do that when you lost, you can, you can, um, you can just take the map and find your way. So I wish, I wish people would more reflect and, and not think, oh, this is, I have this device and this device. Therefore, everybody has that. Therefore, everybody dreams of the same thing as me and have this, has the same apps. And why do, don't they? I, I wish. They were more conscious of, yeah, we are we are the lucky elite and not elite, oh, no, I'm, I'm really, but we are the lucky ones. Um, 